Question 14 is one of the question of uh, Strategy 15, Working Party 3, responsible for the specification of a recommendation on management of transport network and systems and equipment. And uh, transport technology we are covering or are considering, including our OTN optical transport network, carrier grade ethernet, MPS TP, uh, metro transport network, and also synchronization and time distribution. And the specification uh, cover from uh, management requirement to the information exchanged uh, between the uh, transport entity and the system which manage or control these uh, systems, uh, these uh, entities. And uh, the information uh, exchange across this system, we are representing it in, uh, in two forms. One is uh, neutral to the management protocol uh, being used um, uh, between this uh, system. And another form is uh, neutral to the whatever management control protocol being used um, that is, uh, uh, between these entities. And the form in the protocol to neutral, we call it a uh, uh, unified man, uh, modeling language, UML. And the form which is specific to the protocol, such as uh, the YAN, that's the one we use. And so besides this, we also uh, specify the uh, requirement for administering uh, the uh, management system, uh, such as the SDN controller. So uh, this uh, question 14 specifications enable the transport equipment vendor, the network operator and service provider to automate the management of the transport network and the supported services. One of the things that we do in question 14 is we do a lot of work with network management for transport equipment, like Pam was saying. And so what we, we like to think of ourselves as being at the forefront of modeling technology. So we use several open source tools like uh, Eclipse Papyrus for the UML um, information modeling. We use reposit for repository management, we use Git for the management of Yang. We use PYang and Yang Lint to support the validation of the instances of what we're trying to uh, build. And this is very helpful to the industry because now we can start from the beginning where we describe the, the management space in protocol neutral way. That's what Cam was saying about the creation of the management information. And then we capture that and then we have translation tools that take that and convert it into something that can be used with NetConf Yang. We all know that 5G uh, will provide us very abundant viruses, um, various applications, and those applications usually um, have uh, different um, requirements, um, on, uh, such as mobility and uh, bandwidth, delay and reliability, those aspects. And um, then it will uh, required our, our transport network to meet the, those uh, requirements to support 5G applications, uh, especially uh, if in management and control spec that would be included um, rapid service opening and uh, the dynamic resource uh, adjustment and also maximizing the resource uh, utilization some uh, those aspects. So for ours, our transport and management and control system, we have to uh, open the interface to the user and to support uh, the services. And then the uh, protocol neutral information model in our question 14 will um, become very essential because it uh, uh, provides the basic uh, information that could be exposed to the user and maybe uh, the, the and also it could be uh, exchanged uh, um, by using different protocols uh, um, as it needs and then the other aspect is that uh, for uh, it also provided um, um, the data provision to the um, automation and intelligent applications 
and that would be uh, the primers of those applications. Uh, data is very important. And also for, for, I want to mention that for the large scale networks, usually we arrange the management and the control system in hierarchy. And in these cases, the standardized uh, modeling will uh, reduce uh, uh, the complexity between the different levels or uh, systems. That would be very helpful for. And uh, so uh, those aspects are very important for our transport network to support 5G. So uh, we encourage our companies to join us and to contribute to the industry. Industry cooperation in standardization work is very key to the success of the standard. In the world of standardization, there are also the research groups and there are industry. So it is very important for research to come up with ideas, standardization to really concentrate on taking those ideas when they are ready to be standardized, and then creating the recommendations that can be used by industry. The important point here is that it's a virtuous circle. It's a circle because when industry implements the standards, there is no duplication of effort across the, uh, across the ecosystem. The industry nowadays are paying much attention to the network autom automation. The premier is that the, the data is our uh, question 14. Uh, the, um, the standards models uh, can provide the, uh, the, the, all the specific uh, um, data is for the uh, network um, operation and maintenance uh, automation and, and some are more intelligent uh, applications. So, so that would be uh, very helpful for companies to have a deeper understanding of those data if uh, they come to um, attend our question 14 meetings and they will have much more chance to, um, to exchange the ideas with the other companies in the industry and that would be uh, very helpful for, for them to uh, understand how to use those data. IDUT provides excellent environment, facility and platform to support us, question 14, to collaborate internally, externally with the stakeholders. Uh, internal, I mean the uh, sector members, state members, and uh, external uh, stakeholders, I mean the other STO or forums, to, for example, liaison, communication, things like that. So this is uh, an excellent environment. So I, we welcome people to join us to progress the standards work, which will benefit everyone.